John 5 and 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I was born in a Christian home. My father was a preacher of the gospel. In fact, every summer he had gospel meetings in tents and the family was always taken down there. I was the oldest one in the family. I had three sisters, one four years younger, one five years younger, and one 11 years younger than me. But every summer when my father had tent meetings, he would take the family along. And so I heard the gospel many, many times. But I wasn't really troubled about my soul. But finally, when I became 13 years of age, and I was born in 1926, and this was 1939, I realized that in September I'd be starting high school, and I thought, I'll have so much homework, so many things to do, that it'll take my mind away from salvation. I decided that summer that I wanted to be saved more than anything else in the world. During that summer, I lived in Toronto at that time, and we went to the Highfield Road Gospel Hall. During that summer, uh, several different preachers came and had gospel meetings, or at least it was preached on Sunday night. And I was in real soul trouble. I wanted to be saved more than anything else in the world. And I waited behind and had them speak to me, but I didn't get saved. Finally, uh, on the 27th of August, I was, I became 13 years of age on the 24th of July. So this was just a little more than four weeks later. Uh, on the 27th of August, a preacher from the East, and I've gone blank on his name, but I knew him very well, preacher of the gospel. He was at the Highfield Road assembly that weekend. And he preached on the coming of the Lord. Well, I was in deep, deep soul trouble. And I hoped when I was going out that he would ask me to stay behind. But he didn't. So as we walked home, we were, it was about uh, maybe seven blocks to where our house was from the hall. Uh, I walked about 15 feet ahead of my mother and my sister's because I didn't want to talk to them. I was so concerned about my soul and such deep soul trouble. When I got home, I went right up to rent my room and sat on the side of my bed, and I wanted to be saved more than anything else in the world. A little while later, my mother came up, and she said, What's the problem, Alec? I said, I really want to be saved. So... She took my Bible and opened different gospel verses, and she had me read them. She didn't read them, but she had me read them. Finally, we came to John 5 and 24 that we've been reading here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And I realized as I read those verses, those words, that the Lord Jesus, uh, God the Father, sent the Lord Jesus down to this world to go to Calvary and there to suffer and die to put away my sin. And as I read those words, the, the joy of salvation flooded into my soul. And I passed from death unto life. And I received God's salvation there at the age of 13 years of age. And... What a change it made in my life. As I went through high school, of course, I had a lot of high of homework to do, but I read my Bible every day, and I prayed every day, and I gradually began to grow spiritually. I remember once in second year high school, uh, a teacher that we had began to talk about evolution. 
I put my hand up and I stood up and I began to quote different scriptures from the Bible regarding uh, and he just shut up. He couldn't, he couldn't respond. He just shut right up and didn't continue on with the subject of evolution anymore. But thank God, as, an, as a boy of 13, I got saved. But you know, my father was a preacher of the gospel. And he and the two Harris brothers, Herb Harris and, and uh, his, his brother, they had gospel meetings from 1933 to 1943 in Prince Edward Island. And each summer, my father would come back when we got out of school the first week in, Jul in uh, June and pick the family up and take us to, Grant to Prince Edward Island. And we were at the tent meetings every night. And uh, even though I was at gospel meetings every night, I didn't get saved because I really didn't. I, I knew that I, I wanted to be saved, but not really that much. And during those meetings, many people got saved, and a number of assemblies were formed, established for God's glory. But I remember the, uh, the day I got saved, the night I got saved, my father was having meetings in the west end of Prince Edward Island, and that summer he hadn't taken us there. <clears throat> so the next day, I sat down and I wrote a letter to him telling how God had saved me. And uh, they were building a, a hall in the west end of, the, of Prince Edward Island at that time, he and the other preachers. And uh, the, the mail deliverer came up and stopped and he called him and he said, I've got a letter here for you from your son. So he gave me the letter and when he opened it and read how I'd got saved, he walked back to the where the hall was being built and he called all the brethren down and he said, I've got a letter to read to you. So he wrote, he read the letter of how that I had written to him telling how God had saved me the night before. And I can thank God with all my heart for my salvation. And I pray that those in the meeting here tonight will not be left behind because I believe that the Lord's coming is very, very near. In fact, when the, when the disciples shortly before the Lord was arrested, they asked the Lord Jesus, what are the signs of thy coming and the end of this age? And he gave them a number of signs. And I made a detailed study of those signs. And I found that every one of them has increased at a great rate in the last few years. In fact, if you plotted them on a curve, the curve looked like that, it was way up here, which indicates that the Lord's coming must be very, very near. And those that are not saved when the Lord comes are left behind for the awful period of terrible judgment that will fall upon this world during the Great Tribulation. In fact, the Bible tells us in Revelation that over half the population of the world will be killed because of the judgments that will fall upon this world. But all those that have not been saved during this age, during the age before the Lord comes, when the Lord comes, if you're not saved, you will not, you can't get saved during the tribulation. There will be those that will get saved that haven't heard the gospel but those that have heard the gospel will not be able to get saved during the tri great tribulation. And at the end of the tribulation, those that have not been, have died during, with the awful judgments, will all uh, go down to hell and be there for over a thousand years and then be raised to stand before the great white throne judgment when the Lord Jesus will judge every individual and every sin you've ever committed will be brought up. And at the close, all that, are, that stand before him that are not saved will be cast into the lake of fire, into the blackness of darkness forever and ever. What a terrible thing that will be. So it's vitally important that you get saved before the Lord comes. 
He could come at any day. In fact, the indications indicate in the world around about us and all the signs that were given that the Lord's coming must be very, very near. So it's vitally important that those of you who are not saved get saved before it's too late when the Lord comes.